Welcome to Marker Board Videos. Today's video is on balancing chemical equations. When you see a chemical equation that you need to balance, usually it's written like that. First step in balancing it is actually give yourself a little bit of um, room to write. So I like to rewrite my equation, putting blank lines in front of every element or compound in the products and on the reactant side. Uh, the reason that I do that is that helps me re remind me that the only numbers that I can change are numbers that I put on that blank line. This little number here, this 2, that's called a subscript. And you can't change that when you're balancing chemical equations. You can only change coefficients. These little blank lines are where the coefficients go. And right now, there's a number on each of those lines. It's invisible, but it's there. That number is 1. It's 1. So the way I balance chemical equations is I make myself a little t-chart. I ask what's on the left side of the arrow and what's on the right side of the arrow. You can list this as products and reactants if you want. I choose the right, left, and right just because it helps me keep it straight in my little brain. And then I tell, I, I write what elements or compounds I have. I have potassium and I have bromine, and that's all I have in this equation. Now I start counting. How much potassium do I have on the left? I have one. It could be one mole, it could be one atom, depending on the size of your, um, of your equation, but we're going to say one mole. I have one mole of potassium, I have one mole of potassium on the right. That's what I want to see. I want to see the same number on the left and on the right. How much bromine on the left? Two. How much bromine on the right? One. Well, that's an issue because I need to have the same on both sides. And if the only numbers that I can change are the coefficients, and this is a one, if I want to double my amount of bromine, I simply make that a two. But in chemistry, when you change one thing, you change everything. So we have to go back to the beginning. Potassium on the left, one. Potassium on the right, two. Again, I have an issue. Not a big issue because I can change my coefficient. And if I change that coefficient from the invisible 1 to a visible 2, now I can redo this. Potassium on the left, 2. Potassium on the right, 2. That's good. Bromine on the left, remember it's 1 times 2. You don't have to write that 1, but it's there. 1 times 2 is 2 bromines on the left and 2 bromines on the right, and my equation is balanced. Not every equation that you're balancing is going to be that quite that simple. Here's, a, here's an equation with polyatomic ions. I treat polyatomic ions frequently as if they were one thing, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Let me write the equation down here, plus KNO3. The first thing that I do is I look at this equation and I ask myself, is NO3 together as NO3 on both sides? And it is. So I put parentheses around this NO3. That's just to remind me I'm keeping it together. And the same thing with the PO4. All right, so now I make my T-chart. left, right, or products and reactants. And what, what materials do I have? Well, I have calcium. I'm going to keep NO3 together. And the reason I'm keeping it together is because I have it on both sides of the equation. I have potassium and I have PO4. I also put it in parentheses just to remind me to keep it together. So I didn't draw my little blank lines here because I don't really have enough space on my board, but, but you know that they're there. Again, those lines are the only place I can make changes. How much calcium do I have on the left side of my equation? One mole. And on the right side of my equation, I have three. I have three moles. So I have to put a three here or else I, there's no way I can get three on both sides. So three calciums on the left, three calciums on the right. Now NO3, again, we're talking about this whole thing as being one. So this tells me I have two of them and then I have two times three. So I have six on the left. How much on the right? Well, on the right, right now, I only have one. So I want to make a 6. I'm going to throw a 6 right in there, so now I have 6 and 6. Did that, did that impact my calcium? No, my calcium is still 3 and 3, so I'm good. Now let's look at potassium. Potassium here is 3, but here I have 6 potassiums. Oh, so how do I make this 6? How do I, how, how do I go from 3 to 6? Well, I'm going to put a little 2 there. 2 times 3 is 6, and that's 6. Okay, I don't have to relook at the calcium and the NO3 because I didn't change anything. I can take a quick look. 3 and 3, 3 and 3, 6, 6, 6, 6. Now let's look at PO4. I have two PO4s on this side, and I have two PO4s on that side. That 2 was kind of hard to see, but I have 2 and 2. Now let's look at my numbers. I have 3, 2, 1, and 6, and that is my lowest whole number ratio, so that equation is balanced. Really important, one of the most important things you're going to do in chemistry when you're balancing equations is to remember to keep those polyatomic ions together if they are on both sides of the equation exactly the same. Now let's do a combustion reaction. 
we have C3H8 plus O2 reacts to form CO2 plus H2O. All right, and as you know, that is a combustion reaction. It looks pretty easy. On the left, I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I have the same on the right. Now, I don't have any polyatomic ions on this, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Carbon on the left, 3. Carbon on the right, 1. So I'm going to change that right away before I even write it down. Now I have 3 on each side. And again, remember, you can only change coefficients. You can't change subscripts. How much hydrogen do I have on the left? I have 8. 8 atoms, 8 molecules, 8 moles, 8 whatever. But I have 8 on the left. And on the right, I only have 2. So to change that to 8, I'm going to have 4 of these little puppies called H2O. Because each one of those looks like that. So if I had four of those all together, I would have eight hydrogens. So eight on the left, eight on the right. Now let's look at oxygen. I have two on the left. But on the right, I have three times two, so I have six. And then four times one, so I have four. So all together, I have ten oxygens. But I only have two here. Well, if I put a five right there, suddenly that becomes ten, and that becomes ten. And that's my equation's balance. My coefficients are one, 5, 3, 4. And I always take a look at that when I'm done, and I make sure that that's the lowest whole number ratio. If it's the lowest whole number ratio, I'm good to go. Let's do one last equation. And this is a neutralization re uh, equation. Hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide reacts to form water plus sodium chloride. I'm going to change my water. I see this OH right here. So I'm going to change H2O to HOH. Really important when you're balancing equations that you start to recognize things like that. I saw an OH, I'm going to put an OH there. Again, remembering that we can only change our coefficients, not our subscripts. And it looks to me like I have an OH on both sides. So let's put the OH in parentheses and let's see if this works. Make my T-chart, left, right. I have hydrogen, chlorine, sodium, and hydroxide. I'm going to leave my OH together. I'm going to leave it together because it's on the left and on the right. How much hydrogen on the left? Now just hydrogen, not the OH. How much hydrogen on the left? One. And on the right? One. If you used H2O, you would have thought there were two, and this would have been a very difficult equation to balance. But because you recognize that it's not H2O, if you write it as HOH, it becomes a simpler equation. Sodium on, I'm sorry, chlorine on the left? One. Chlorine on the right? One. Perfect. Sodium on the left, one. Sodium on the right, one. And hydroxide on the left, one. Hydroxide on the right, one. Do you see how easy it was? Totally balanced, actually. But you see how easy it is when you break your, your water down to HOH? Only if you have an OH on one side, you should make it as HOH on the next side. Please watch for part two of marker board videos, Balancing Equations.